Good evening. It is 7 p.m. Wednesday, February 3rd, 2016. This is a public meeting of the Town of Speedway Board of Zoning Appeals. I am Mike Simonson, Chairman of the Board. With me tonight are Steve Jones, our Vice Chairman, Tyler Carmichael, our Secretary, and Mike Allen, one of our Board Members. Also with us is Michelle Lighty, our Recording Secretary, and Kathleen Blackham, representing the Indianapolis Department of Metropolitan Development. Have all who wish to speak been sworn? They have. Thank you. Would everyone please mute or turn off any cell phones at this time? Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from our previous meeting? Yes. Um, Make a motion. Motion for their adopt. Adopt them as printed. Yeah. I'll second that. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Seeing as there's no unfamiliar faces in the crowd, I'm not going to go over the rules of our meeting because I think everybody knows how we proceed. Tonight's variance is a continuance from uh, last month for 2015 UVS 002, also known as 5000 Crawfordsville Road. Will the petitioner or their representative please step to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Ms. Lighty, Ms. Blackham. I'm Will Gooden. I represent the petitioner, Mary Lou Gordon, on this uh, use variance petition. Uh, appreciate having the opportunity to be back in front of you this evening. We did continue this um, to take a look at um, some potential modifications and commitments to make. And um, I think everyone's familiar. This is 5000 Crawfordsville Road, uh, currently operating uh, as a C1 use, a uh, real estate office under a variance. <coughs> Pardon me. And the request is uh, our petition is requesting that the uh, C1 uses be expanded to include all C1 uses um, that listed under uh, Section C1 of the, uh, of the ordinance. Um, however, uh, based on the first meeting that we had and some questions and concerns of the board, uh, we, took, we uh, adjourned to take a look at whether it would be appropriate and feasible to try to limit um, those C1 uses rather than asking for um, a variance for any and all C1 uses and have done that. Um, we've, uh, as I said, without going back, rehashing the entire um, petition, I think everyone's pretty, pretty well familiar with it. Um, I wanted to give you a little exhibit that we prepared that lists um, the mod modifications and commitments, additional commitments that the petitioner would be willing to uh, submit. And um, Thank you. two of them, um, really one is in the form Thank of a, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Thank you. One is in the form <clears throat> of an actual commitment, and that is that number one listed there um, under section 732-201A6 and A8 um, of the uh, statute of the ordinances. 732201 discusses the uh, C1 uses that are available, including an assisted living facility, auditorium, community multi service, daycare center, center et cetera. Um, and so, what the petitioner is willing to commit to is a s subsection 6 and subsection 8 uses only. And that would be under subsection 6 uh, membership organizations or clubs um, only for office. Uh, you know, their business office uses, uh, and also in uh, subsection 8, uh, office uses, um, professional and business uses as listed there in those subsections. Um, so one of the uh, things we want to present to you this evening is the, com uh, the commitment of um, the petitioner to limit those C1 uses to the subsections indicated. Um, also attached with that exhibit that I handed you is a um, commitment letter 
uh, from the Speedway Nazarene Church, which is the um, neighboring property immediately to the west for um, a commitment to allow during normal business hours um, any parking in their facility uh, for in the event that there were any overflow parking needed. I'm going to hand you also a, a photograph just for illustration. I know everybody's familiar with the area, but it gives me at least a little bit more perspective when I talk about it. Thanks again. This photograph is an aerial under, sort of underneath the blue box um, is the subject property. Obviously, Speedway Nazarene Church is to the left and um, their parking lot. Um, interesting illustration, this is obviously taken from the map Indy function, um, but it appears that the Speedway Nazarene parking lot certainly abuts um, my client's property line and potentially, you know, encroaches over it, but that this is this obviously isn't um, specifically accurate. It's not a survey, but the point being an illustration to show the location um, of the uh, parking lot vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, the property line and the two parcels. Again, the uh, church has indicated that they would be willing to and would allow any overflow parking. I want to touch on that though briefly. Again, this is something that, as we've indicated before, uh, my client recognizes that the use that this uh, that this office would be to to which the office would be put, you know, an accountant's office, an attorney's office, something along those lines, is going to be uh, limited just as it has been for the past um, number of years with the real estate office use to the parking that's available. We do now have this additional opportunity for safe, off-street, uh, protected parking that's easily uh, accessed um, between the parcels in the event that that was necessary. Again, we anticipate that any you know, tenant, any potential tenant in this property is going to, uh, you know, the first thing they're going to see are the physical characteristics, obviously, and they're going to understand that, that what is there is there. So. Um, this isn't going to be a property that's subject to not only because we're committing to it um, in the C1 uses, but just out of practicality, it's not going to be a property that will attract a tenant that's going to have a lot of in and out, you know, business um, and, and traffic. In the event that there that there were, um, then we've got this additional parking. One last point on that. Um, our our calculations of and when I say calculation. The, the square footage, this is, a, as you recall, it's, a, it's an old residence. There's an upper level or a main level and then a lower level. Um, and we've talked a little bit about that. Um, when it was used solely as a uh, real estate office, the multiple agents from the office had their office spaces in the lower level and the, kind of the main reception area and business office was on the, on the upper level. Roughly 1,000 square foot per level. Um, typical kind of, you know, 1930s bungalow, 1940s bungalow. Um, if you look at the off-street, or if you look at the off-street parking requirements under Section 732-211, um, the table lists um, commercial office use, uh, professional office for three and a half parking spaces per thousand square feet of gross floor area. Um, and that would, in this case, uh, 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 amount to approximately seven spaces, to seven spaces of three and a half if you figure 2,000 square feet. And in this particular location, you know what, I may not have, did I attach that section for you? Not that I could see. I've got a copy of it, I, you, you guys can take a look at it. And there is there are three parking spaces that face Crawfordsville Road, if you will. There is one parallel space right along Auburn uh, to the to the north of the three spaces as you go back uh, to the north of the lot. 
there is a space between the existing garage and the primary building, and then there are two spaces in front of each of the single uh, garage doors. <clears throat> so I think <clears throat> the, the parcel substantially complies mm -hmm. with the statute as it is anyway, um, but we've still got this opportunity for some safe off-street parking in the event that it's necessary from the church. The other, um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was with respect to a landscaping requirement or, or the, uh, to the extent that there is a, a landscape requirement and, and as staff has indicated in, in their report, a request for some landscaping. There's a, um, a printed a aerial kind of a, a larger area of the, uh, of the existing area. And I've labeled it that there's no existing transitional front yard or other landscaping near the subject property. So <clears throat> if you take a look at this, it's pretty, it's pretty illustrative. Um, you know, to the east, obviously, we've got a big uh, car wash, full-service car wash and liquor store. Um, there's no transitional or um, uh, buffer landscaping there. As we go to the west, there's none uh, around the church. Um, which is operating as a SU, uh, special use um, in this dwelling district as well as to the west of that, the law office um, that also has surface parking, um, some surface parking in the back, but no transitional um, landscaping or front yard landscaping. And this continues, as you know, and as you can see, and as I'm sure you know, um, all the way up Crawfordsville Road uh, in both directions and then obviously on the other side of the street we've got a completely different condition with um, the frontage <coughs> situation and no no direct uh, frontage on the south side of Crawfordsville Road so the requests that we're making won't change the building at all um, the appearance of the building you know other than potential uh, change in the sign that's on the building or something of that nature isn't going to change no one will know you know if you as you drive by that there's anything different other than a different office there um, we think it's um, uh, improper to require uh, any sort of landscaping because it just doesn't exist anywhere else in these with these uses um, the church we can only assume the church when they obtain the permits to um, to expand that parking lot to put that parking lot where it is all the way to the property line wasn't required, um, although it's the same use in the same sort of district to get um, to buffer it with landscaping. Um, and that, quite honestly, would be the reason for the buffer, it would be to buffer the parking lot um, to look at, so you wouldn't necessarily look at the undercarriage of cars or something along that line. Um, so to have a requirement in this case to add additional landscaping when we're not changing the um, use of the building in any, in any way or, or you know, more importantly, the physical characteristics of the building in any way um, would be inappropriate. Um, to that point, the other issue that I see as problematic with a front yard landscape along Crawfordsville Road is that based on the angle, the, the sort of the northwest to southeast angle of Crawfordsville Road, your clear site triangular area, as referenced in section 732 of the ordinance, um, subsection 214C, is going to be limited even more. If this is a right angle um, and you look at the requirements of this clear site triangular area, you've got, you've got more uh, visual, uh, visual clearance, <coughs> excuse me, visual clearance if you're sitting south on Audubon looking to the right up Crawfordsville <coughs> Road to see if traffic would clear if it's a right angle. However, it's not, it's a little bit acute, and so you, you're looking back farther to the right to see that oncoming traffic. If you plant um, landscaping in that front yard, you're, it, it, as far as I can tell, you've completely interfered with the um, required clear site triangular area. Um, so you run into a, an additional safety <coughs> concern that just isn't there. You create a potential problem that you don't have now. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention, and then we'd be happy to take any questions that, y that you all have, um, 
is that and I apologize I'm fighting a ridiculous cold I'll hand this to you first just what thank you Michelle you have the bag. thanks Will uh -huh. I've given you a copy of a portion of Chapter 735 of the Zoning Ordinance and the table that talks about the um, development standards that apply to special use districts. This, and, and special uses, this is a special use. The Nazarene Church, obviously, next door is an SU1 use, a religious use, as defined in Section 735-751. And if you flip the page to subsection F, it has a table to show the development standards and it indicates that in addition to the site and development standard requirements of subsection B2 of the special use ordinance all uses permitted within the special use district shall be administratively reviewed using as an administrative guide the development standards applicable to the specified district as follows and you can see the very first one there the SU1 uh, is a uh, C1 uh, development standard <clears throat> and in this commercial um, with that C1 use um, in, in this area. We're looking at, in a dwelling district, we're looking at consecutive properties going both ways on Crawfordsville Road that are operating as commercial uses. Um, it's uh, our belief that the uh, landscape requirements do not apply based upon the statute. And it is also permissible specifically in a commercial district with the statute that I did hand you um, with the commitments on this particular exhibit for uh, off-street parking to be provided for more than one building. So it's specifically provided in the statute that the, that the parking uh, be supplemented uh, or provided by the church lot for both the church and the subject property. So with that, our request is that you grant the petition for variance limited to the uses of subsection uh, subsections 6 and 8 under the C1 designation as a commitment um, and uh, otherwise uh, grant the petition as, as requested. And again, we'd be happy to answer any, any questions that you have. With all due respect, the issue of the landscaping and claiming that no other property in the area is landscaped is kind of ridiculous um, just because my neighbors don't have flowers and bushes or landscaping around their house doesn't mean I shouldn't put anything in to help improve the the appearance of my property and the neighborhood so just because the other guys aren't doing it and the liquor store has done some landscaping this past year <clears throat> they've landscaped that median area between the cord street access and their parking lot um, and there are many varieties of shrubbery and other things that could be planted along Crawfordsville Road that would not obstruct the view of vehicles trying to turn right or left onto Crawfordsville from Auburn but would help soften the the appearance of the parking lot that currently exists so your, um, your point is absolutely well taken and and that ab, that isn't anything that 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 isn't a position that we're taking in this case well, as that's far exactly as what you said you said there look at the picture I gave you there's no other landscaping in front of any of these other properties so why should we have to put landscaping in well, that's not that's what I heard. That's not that isn't the, the argument. The argument is that there's a, that staff has indicated they would like to see transitional front and side yard landscaping um, within the same. This is there's a you know, the, the legal standard that applies here is that we've got to have some equal treatment um, and within the same use and along the same frontage and with the same commercial uses and in, in even more. Um, heavy in commercial uses to the east with the car wash and the liquor store we don't have that we don't have that 
application. Um, they've, <coughs> they've obviously had to apply for variances. These properties are all operating under variance or rezone to the east um, for the liquor store. And, and we're not, I, I, would, I only assume, we're not required to have the same, um, to have the same uh, requirements, landscaping requirements. So now we're in a situation where we've got si similarly situated individuals seeking um, a variance under the ordinance being treated differently. Um, it isn't. It isn't a matter of whether you know, from an aesthetic standpoint, um, the the you know our our argument in that situ in the, on that point is not that it's a it's an aesthetics issue or anything of that nature. It's simply a requirement that wasn't imposed on others in the same situation that would be imposed here. Well, I can't speak for the boards that approved the uh, variance for the the car wash, but. As far as the liquor store, they do have some very strict um, requirements that they need to meet. They have not met all of the requirements yet, but they are slowly working towards those commitments. And um, any other group that approaches this board for a variance will receive similar requests for improving the, the appearance of their property. <clears throat> if we have an opportunity, which we do at this point in time, to try and improve something, that's the position this board is taking. So uh, one other question I have for the uh, petitioner is, in 09, they put in a parking lot. In 2010, we finally agreed to approve a variance for the parking lot with some conditions. Why did you tear out that parking lot? Yes. Why don't you come up so that we make sure we're on? You know, a lot of these issues would not be um, before us had you met the commitments that we all agreed to for the variance to keep that parking lot. My name, he said to state my name. Yes. It's Mary Lou Gordon, uh, 5000 Crawfordsville Road. <coughs> uh, in 2008, um, I started in 2007, I had called here at the town hall and asked them what it would take to put in a parking lot. And uh, they said that I just needed to get a, Eileen Fisher, the president of the council, told me I just needed to get a drawing and write up my statement of the plan of what the parking lot was going to be and that the board, uh, in two separate emails, uh, she said, we're fine for you to approve it. Go ahead, put it in. And I said, uh, how long can I leave the gravel to settle? And she said, one year. Uh, you would have to put the asphalt in. And it was okay to proceed and have it done by October of 2008. So um, I did. I put in a parking lot because Eileen said I could. Uh, and I thought that's I was doing the right thing by coming to the board uh, president of the council she she gave me written permission uh, while they were doing the parking lot uh, I can't remember his name he was in charge of the drainage for the city he came over and said uh, you're okay because it's under an acre Be Norm uh, I can't think of his name uh, you're okay because it's under an acre, uh, you can go ahead and proceed. So uh, $14,000 worth of asphalt I put in. First they had to haul out topsoil, then they brought in tons and tons of two different kinds of stone, and they put it in, and I put the parking lot in. And the next year, I got a notice from the city of Indianapolis that says, where's your permit? And I said, well, here it is. It's the permission from the Speedway Town Council. Well, that's not a permit. I said, well, okay. I didn't know that. So then we came back here with, I, I guess that was in 2010, and uh, I hired David Gilman to help me. And uh, he told me I didn't need to come to the hearing <laughs> uh, to meet in front of the uh, zoning board. That he came by himself, and uh, he called me afterwards, and he said, I got it all settled you've got to put in sidewalk from the alley to Crawfordsville Road. You've got to dig out the old curbs and put in brand new curbs. 
And he said, they're four foot deep. I said, are you crazy? I, <laughs> I can't start digging up city streets and taking in, and putting in curbs and sidewalks. I said, I can't do that. I, 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 I don't have the money to do that. So I took the parking lot out. That, that's what I did. And it cost me um, about $8,000 to take it out. So right now, I've put a parking lot in, taken a parking lot out, been in front of this board three times, and I've got about $30,000 in debt, and I don't have anything. I got nothing. So that's the reason I, I didn't proceed is because I didn't know what to do. I, I, it was a sidewalk to nowhere from the alley to <coughs> Crawfordsville Road and four foot deep into the ground, concrete curbs. I didn't have the money to do it. I've been there 30 years. Uh, I feel like I've been a really good citizen to the town of Speedway. Um, I've kept that property in pristine condition. Um, it's had new roof, new siding, or new windows, new landscaping, all the old landscaping taken out, all new around the building. I, I think it's a nice property for the town of Speedway. I, I, and that's how I intend to keep it. But, but that's why I took it out. I didn't do it. Mary, the, the city of Indianapolis told you that you had told your attorney that you had to put a sidewalk in no this board or did. this board okay this board um, approved the variance if I put the sidewalk and curbs and massive landscaping and I just couldn't do it that um, is referenced in our packet the it's on page 8 in the exhibit C it's actually what was approved it was approved, and, and I... Yeah, it's... Um, anyway, yeah, it's right there in our packet. I don't... See Which one you at? I think this is staff Tyler. report. The staff report. Yeah, I mean, okay. Page 8 of the staff report. That's what was approved November 3rd, 2010. Had to be completed by, looks like... Do you have that? June 1st. Yeah, six, seven months. Okay. I just felt like David Gilman okayed to me signing a blank check, and I I couldn't do it. So it was it was. So it was cheaper to, to take the parking it. lot out than. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I recall, during that time period, that in discussions with the town manager of the time, that the the curb aspect of it was going to be was not going to be required. Nobody told me that. It was in. I got that letter that said there was curbs and sidewalks. Oh. And Go to page eight. Did you call and ask anybody? Did I did. Did you call the, to discuss it with? Yes, page eight. I did. Because I. And they sent me plans. They even Barbara Lawrence at okay. the time sent me plans for the curbs, how to do the curbs. That I was supposed to give that to somebody to do the curbs. Yeah, they, they were just wanting to match them up on the Gerard Allison sewer separation project. I think so. They didn't do them when, when they when they put curbs in for the sewer situation or whatever that yes. was. They didn't do my long in front of my building. That's because your they were unsure of what was going I know, to happen. I, I know they with, didn't know what was going to happen. I that area, so <coughs> and I believe at that time the asphalt went all the way out to the curb. No, it never did go out to the curb. There was about six foot or eight foot grass between the parking lot and Auburn. It went to the alley, but it didn't go to Auburn. <coughs> I know part of the requirement was to remove part of that parking area from the, the right of way. So. Yeah, I could have done all that, but, but, but I, I couldn't start putting in, I didn't even know how much it was gonna cost.
with respect to the, the letter from the church authorizing the use of the, the parking lot if, as an overflow situation, um, that's only valid as long as they own the property. It is, I, I guess, as so long as if, they own the church. Yeah. If I'll that if transitions, they, but if that transitions, then yes. that that Probably. agreement right. would could potentially uh, dissolve as well. Yeah. And For 30 years, the church and I have, you know, when they were larger, they used my parking lot a lot for Wednesday night for their services or funerals, uh, even their Sundays, uh, and vice versa. Uh, if I had closings there, they, they, you know, go ahead and park. They didn't care. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of a neighborly thing to sure. do. And then when this came up, I asked uh, the superintendent. He's over 22 Nazarene churches. And he said, well, of course, you know, as long as we own it and you own yours, and it's fine. It's going on for 30 years, and I don't think they're going anywhere. I, I guess it could happen. Sure. With regard to that parking lot, though, from the church, the additional parking, um, if any customers or patrons of whatever business does over, you know, come into that building, how are they to access your building? Well, they just Espe walk across the yard. I understand that. But, uh, it is wintertime, albeit a very warm yeah. winter this year, but uh, winter's past, you know, foot foot and a half of snow, uh, there's no sidewalk. They would e have to either go all the way down, and the alleys and Speedway are not really plowed per se. If they are, it usually takes three to four days sometimes to get to them by the town. Um, they would not have direct access. They would either have to walk along the road, possibly, yeah, I, or down through the alley. I guess it would be possible to put a walk in. I, I, we, that's what I'm in asking. In 30 I mean, years, we've never... Certainly, I, I never understand had a what problem, you're saying. But we could put a walk in, yes. Mm -hmm. There's almost a worn path there now from the right. mailman, you know, so it would be easy to put a path or a walk in. I just feel like I've been a good addition to Speedway. I guess a question for you or Will or both of you. How about that? Um, your the last meeting or the one before that we continue, we were talking about um, you were going to try and see who might be interested in renting your facility. Has anything happened with that? No. no. Well, and that was <clears throat> specifically to be able to put in writing a commitment to you all as to which yeah. To limit the uses. Yeah, so. I'm, I guess I'm not looking for that. What I'm just looking for is to see if you've had some type of positive. No, because I, my ideal is an attorney, you right. know, or a, a CPA. I, I'm not. It's it's not that big of a building to put, you know, a bunch of people in there. Right. Yeah. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I think she's part of it. It too is waiting to, you know. Before I'm waiting she, she to can't see. really commit to anything until, until she knows what the, right. what the outcome of the petition is. I don't know wh whether to turn it back into a residence. <clears throat> you know, I'm, that's that's an option. Uh, I've had somebody giving me an estimate to put a kitchen back in. So if I have to, that's what I'm going to do. Is just turn it into a residence and let it go. I, I've I've been over here three, into that. since two thousand and seven. So. so, are you intending to maintain an office as well in that no, building? No, I'm not. You're, you will move your offices. I've already got an office in Avon with Century Twenty One Sheets. Okay. So the entire. I just come back and forth because, uh, you know, it's either that or just let it sit there and let the mice run through it. So <laughs> another baking whatever uh, tenant would be ruined. would occupy the entire premises. Uh, they could. Yeah. A, a, somebody living there. It's got a basement with another half bath. They, yeah. I mean, if you had another business a, entity in there that would be a single 
business, I, not multiple if businesses. If that's what you want, I, I, I it's a question. I, I'm not was, stating I, what I want. I'm asking. One. I don't know because I don't know what kind of tenant I can even get. I would go either either two tenants or one, but it's not going to be parking all yeah. over the streets and. Yeah, and it's not. It, well, I guess what Mike's what at question was is you moved on to another office and you're renting the whole building to somebody else right okay. that's the goal yeah right i, I, I don't need two offices i don't mean I to speak my for you, Mike, century 21 with another century 21 i don't need two locations for myself but you're not looking to rent the first floor to one business Ideally, in the I basement like to, to the, the lower it, level it, i would like to but if you guys say no then i know you know i'll rent it well to I, my concern is if if you had two occupants in the building is there a proper separation between the two occupancies <coughs> for, for fire code? Yes, there so is. There's two separate entrances. That, that's not my question. Oh, I don't the know the separation, is, is there a, the construction between the two levels, is it consistent with the, the fire code requiring at least a minimum one hour separation in case there's a fire at, on either, either side of the the, the separation I think the continued use of it for the same general use without any alteration to the building itself it's it, it in other words if it's compliant now then it would be compliant going forward if it, it it's, it's only not compliant as as long as there's a single tenant if there are two different tenants much like two different um, residents in a, a double or in an apartment building mm -hmm. where you have multiple tenants you have to provide for a, a separation to protect either one from something that could happen in the other um, I guess I don't area. know what that what it is what is the, I, the, the the response to that is that it, any codes that would be required to be met for any use of you know any building codes would you know obviously would they would be subject to that um whatever the use would be so and and if there was some sort of if there were two tenants um and there was you know and there was a you know inspection necessary there and any remediation to be required then you know that would it would be what it would be certainly so <clears throat> And, Will, you're talking about the handout that you gave us. You're talking about this being used for um, item number six and eight only? That's correct. Section 732-201A is the C1 permitted uses. It lists a total of 11, 12, 13, 14 categories of uses in, in we would be um, committed to limiting to those two subsections, six and eight. Okay. And <clears throat> I got a good laugh to myself when I thought, wait a minute, fraternity or sorority? <laughs> Obviously, that's just an off. It's, it's, this is only limited to offices, so, you know, I, it wouldn't work for something like that anyway, but from right. a space perspective. But yeah, because above it, it says offices only. Right. Would you be willing to, under number eight, amend that to exclude any um, cashier check places or absolutely I, we don't need another check cashing place at speedway okay well i just want to make sure that's on the record then and so would the request be then that it eliminate any financial institution or just uh i don't know about check cashing right now my my mm -hmm. feelings are my thoughts are that that as a board we continue this till March so that we can come up with a our own list of what we feel would be acceptable uses for the the property and you know present that to you for for review to see if it's agreeable with you rather I mean there's there's a pretty broad range of, of 
uses here, and some of them could be um, interpreted fairly loosely um, to be acceptable under the, the guidelines provided. And, you know, just trying to um, come to some kind of an agreement and also protect the neighborhood and the town, um, you know, I personally would like some more time to to go over what type of uses we could um, feel comfortable with um, approving. One second. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'd be happy to, since we've committed already to limit it to the subsections six and eight that are here, to literally go through and line out or strike any of the ones that that you'd be and and I can tell you there are some right right away that it just wouldn't work and, sure. and Mary Lou wouldn't have any intention to do um, well I mean that's not the intent of what this hearing is about but we if we continue it we can have further discussions we can we can continue we can it, discuss I... with um, the town manager and others what type of uses specifically would be acceptable from our our viewpoint and if that's agreeable with you we could then um, proceed you know, proceed at that our next hearing in March to um, go forward um, that I mean certainly the board's pleasure is the board's pleasure uh, but I guess what I'm thinking is since it's already a limited th there there are there are only these uses that are permitted under these two subsections at maximum and I'm telling you in two minutes or three minutes we could go through and agree to eliminate several of those if I mean if, if, if the board simply needs more time to think about that I, I'm that's inclined fine. to think we need more time to, to discuss it and make sure that we all don't feel that we're rushing to a, a decision tonight and that you know we do our due diligence to um, word it correctly and and make sure that you know we are uh, protecting the neighborhood and the town and not leaving any um, loopholes or any uh, other means for undesirable occupancies to, to, to get in so that's that, um, if that's the request of the board then you know certainly we're um, I I guess I just would say for the record I think we could we could knock it out um, I, mean, I can I can tell you right away there there are a number of them on here that 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 uh, my client would agree to not rent to under under six and eight and um, but I'm just concerned at this point you know about cost uh, and time the longer we go without having a decision on what she can do with her property and the more time I've got to spend you know coming back which I'm, I'm okay with that obviously but I'm just trying to be sensitive and everybody else's time yeah. um, on this file so well but I said I, on the same note I need to make sure that I'm doing you know, the best job I can for the town and for the neighborhood and you know make sure that we're we're um, protecting them as as best we can so <clears throat> one moment agreement Uh, Mr. Chair, if yes. we continued to march, would we be able to, do you think it would be possible to have um, um, through either through Michelle, communication between me and Michelle or and, and Kathleen, some dialogue on on your thoughts as a board Absolutely. between now and then and yes. so that if we did come back in March, we'd sort of just be making a determination. My, my intent for the continuance <clears throat> is that in March, we actually have a vote on 
on the variance yeah. okay. based on what you've presented us and then what we've had a chance to discuss um, with the town and others to make sure that we get everything uh, where it needs to be and, and I guess settle it in March. Right, right. Can I ask you what you're thinking about on the landscaping? I, I'm not in disagreement with what uh, Ms. Blackham has proposed okay. as far as... Because um, that's going to sway how I'm, what I'm going to do with, you know, renting it as a residence. I, I just don't have any more money to put into it. So if, if we're leaning towards, you know, extensive landscaping and... I don't think it's extensive landscaping. I think that they want, you know, some, some level of landscaping to, uh, you know, it, unlike the properties to the east and west, it is still a residential property. And um, I think it should have some, some of that character with it. And, the, you know, the landscaping isn't going to hurt the value of the property. Only going to improve the value of your property and the neighborhood. So, so then, just so I'm clear, the board's uh, the action the board will take this evening is to um, continue this petition until the next scheduled hearing in March, and in the interim, um, we'll um, I guess assess the commitments that we've made at this point, and then uh, get back in touch with me. In some in some way to kind of communicate what the board's preference is, sure. and before the before the next before meeting? the next hearing, okay. we, there will be dialogue, or we will present what our desired um, uses or allowable uses will be, and then in March we will, you know, uh, officially vote on on the variance. Okay. And in regard to the landscaping, I mean, it does state, I mean, you know, if we do require landscaping per, you know, what the, um, Ms. Blackham. what Ms. Blackham has, um, you know, proposed previously, I mean, uh, it does say, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be agreed upon what the landscaping is at that moment, because it says right here, a landscape plan to be submitted for administrator's approval within 60 days of the approval of approval of the variance so right I mean you can propose you know minimum landscaping and they may come back and say that's you know um, acceptable so understood yep uh, it doesn't have to be you know immediate right so thank you so I have a, a motion for a continuance yeah I'll make a motion please I'll continue second. to March all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed same sign Motion carries 4-0. We'll see you again in March. Thanks. Have a good evening. Thank you.